Have you ever walked around in the forest or the woods of Appalachia, different places, different ridges, and you ever wonder, what is all these plants? What are they for? All different varieties. These mountains are full of plants. You couldn't count them. Most people think they're just trees or weeds, but no, they have a bigger significance and it's secret to a lot of people. Now I'm gonna go over some of these wild mountain roots and herbs of Appalachia, just a few. There's as many of them, if not more, than there are superstitions in these old mountains, and that's a lot. Now these old, these mountains, they've been inhabited for centuries by the Native Americans, and they learned these roots they learn roots by trial and error, I'd say, over the years. What works for certain ailments, what don't. And they live by it. And they live one with the land. So they know what worked and what didn't for different ailments. These old people of the mountains, they know it. They not have the education everybody thinks but they know these mountains, they know every plant, what would do this and what would do that, and they live by it, and they live their whole life. If we could only know what they know, it's all gone forgotten, most of it, and we're trying to carry it on. Now these old Appalachian Mountains, they're some of the oldest mountains in the world, among the oldest and they hold a lot of secrets. And there's just so many millions of variety of plants out there that they're still studying today. And when these settlers come in here, they mingled with the Indians. They intermixed with them, intermarried, and they learned their secrets. They learned what ailments, what roots, what herbs cure certain ailments, sicknesses, and they carried on this tradition, and they still do today a lot of places. Now these old people, they lived hard. They didn't have no education. They, they couldn't write their name, most of them. But they, they believed in the land, and they know just how to live off of it. That was their life. And I've seen it myself, these pioneer graveyards, it's full of babies, unmarked graves from all these settlers over the years. Now these mothers, they tried hard, they loved their children, and they tried to help them best they could. But you gotta remember, there wasn't no doctors back in them days, no modern medicine. So they tried to cure these babies best they can. Sometimes it worked, a lot of times it didn't. But the good thing is, the good Lord knows each and every one of these babies and where they're buried. Now, most of these roots come from this area shaded in red that we'll be talking about today. This is the growing areas of these roots, especially ginseng. Well, this is the area. They've grown all around the world, but this is in the United States where most of the roots come from. Now, before I get started, I just want to say that I'm not a botanist, and I sure ain't no doctor or chemist. And I just want to warn everybody that I'm just here just to show you the roots and what they look like. Now remember, one dire warning. You can't just grab these plants up and start eating on them out of the ground or whatever. They've got to be processed in a certain manner and prepared for consumption and dosage in a certain manner. And remember, you can poison yourself. These ain't nothing to play with. These plants is, can do certain things, but they had to be done and prepared in a certain way, or you can poison yourself. Now, that being said, we'll get into our list here of the herbs and roots of the Appalachians. First one on the list is ginseng. 
the most popular and sought after root in these mountains. And ginseng is grown all here in the red, but the wild mountain ginseng is mostly right here in the Appalachia circled in yellow. Now this stuff grows, a lot of people cultivate it and grow it on farms and stuff like that, but here sought after is mostly the wild mountain, just wild root in these mountains. This is a really sought after root. It is really expensive. Now ginseng, it's good for antioxidant, inflammation of the body, brain function for memory, it's calmness, a moon factor, a mood factor, moose and boom system, blood disorders, a lot of other different things. And here's what it looks like. This is the plant when it has berries on it. And it usually has berries on it late summer up to early fall, and then they're gone. And here's what it looks like in my hand. This is the plant. It's not a tree, it's just a plant. You may think it's a weed, but no, this is ginseng, the way it's made. See how it forks out perfectly? You got two prong, three prong, four prong. And here's what the root looks like when you dig it up. A lot of people take these berries and they plant them back in the ground for the future. Now here's what a root looks like close up after it's cleaned up off the dirt off of it. And it takes a lot of root here. You have to clean them, dry them out. Usually takes a few weeks to dry them out real good. Maybe a little less, maybe a little longer. But this is what the root looks like. It takes a lot to make a pound. That's how they sell it, by the pound. And here's what it looks like when it's dried out and they've processed it a little bit. It's really sought after root. It goes for $550 to $800 a pound. Now these were 19 uh, or 2019 prices, so things could have changed, could be more. Now these old things, it's so sought after, it's like asking somebody, where are you ginseng hunting? It's like it asking what's your favorite fishing spot. It's a secret. A lot of people go after this stuff. But it has so many cures. The biggest market for it is in Asia. And they really, really go after this wild mountain root out of these Appalachians. So that's ginseng, and here's a, the most sought after root in these mountains. Well, next up on our list is yellow root. This is used for a lot of different medicines. And they're still trying to develop different medicines for this root. And here's what it looks like. The yellow roots used for medicines in mouth infections, sore throat, diabetes. It's an antibiotic and they make medicine to aid in childbirth. A lot of stuff made out of this. Here's what it looks like out in the wild. Looks like a weed, but it's not. It's yellow root. This is what it looks like. And here is what the root looks like. It looks like a, a long stem down under the plant. And it's called yellow root because it's yellow. And here's what the roots look like when they're dried out, seasoning. And there is a market for it. And here's better look at the leaves on them. You know, they cultivate a lot of this stuff, but I showed you what was in the wild. It looks a little different. And next up on the list is blood root. This grows out amongst the yellow root, the ginseng, out in these mountains. And here's what it looks like. 
You put up a little flowery plant in the spring and the summer. And it's good for antibiotic aid, soothes muscles, heart and lungs, for diseases, gingivitis, helps fight cancer such as breast cancer, prostate cancer. A lot of medicine's made out of that. Here's a better look at the leaves on them. They got an odd shape to them. And here's the root. It got its name blood root or red root by looking at the root here. It's just bright red. Blood red. That's how it got its name. So that's blood root. A lot of medicine's made out of that. Next up on the list is ginger. They cultivate this too, but wild ginger is the best. Here's what it looks like. And out in the wild, it looks like this out in the mountains. But right here, it's good for upset stomachs, joint pain, muscle pain, and antioxidant properties. Make a lot of medicine out of that. Here's what it looks like right out in the wild, out in the woods. Kind of little different shapes, but that's what it looks like. It'll grow out in little patches or big patches, just spread out. And here's what the root looks like. This is before it's clean, processed. So that's wild ginger. Next up on the list is one that's not very much seen, but you see it in the woods if you're out, especially in the spring. It's called squall root. It looks like this. It's more of a parasite like grows off of beech trees, around the roots of oaks and stuff. This is an old squall root that the Native Americans used to use. And it was good for female menstruational cramps you know when they have these pains and stuff that's what the uh, they made tea out of this the Native Americans did way back in the day I don't know if they still use it but they may make medicines out of it today so that's squall root next up on it is stinging nettles they just call them nettles but they're really stinging nettles and here's what they look like. They look like a weed. Going out the edge of a field or in a field, they look like a weed, but they're not. And the reason they're called stinging nettles, they got little, little, little sticky spines all up and down the stems on them. And they're good for allergy relief, hay fever. They make tea from it, helps blood pressure, arthritis, and more, diabetes, it, the list goes on and on on these stinging nettles. They are really good. They really make a lot of medicine out of these. And here's more of what the leaves look like. And now, keep in mind, a lot of them look a little different out in the wild in these patches of weeds and stuff. They look a little different. But this is what they look like. That's stinging nettles. The next up on the list, as you've probably seen, is a May apple. Now, they come up in the spring, and they'd be little plotches here and there of them, and then they could be big old areas covered in nothing but May apple. This is what they look like. And they're good for genital warts, small lung cancer and tumors and different types of cancers. They still develop in these, these plants. But this is what they're used for in today's modern medicine. And here's a better look at the way the, the leaves look like on them. I'm sure you've seen them if you've been out in the woods in the spring. 
And usually in the late spring, early summer, you know, they'll put off a little fruit like this, a little flowery plant. And this is what they make their medicines from. So this is May apple. Now next up is peppermint. Now these these are coming up are just herbs around the house that the, the old timers would grow around in the herb gardens around the house. The peppermint, this is what it looks like. It was good for relieving stress, digestive issues, good decongestant for colds and flus and stuff like that. Now they grow that around the house in their little herb gardens and made medicine out of it. This is what peppermint looks like up close. Now next up, more looks like a bush than it does a plant or a, you know, a flower. It's called elderberry. Looks more like a bush, big old plant. Now they made medicine out of this for home remedies and medicine today. It lowers cholesterol, improves vision, boosts the immune system for colds, and they still use that. I've seen a lot of old, old house seats that still had these bushes growing around it. And they, the old people used these for medicines all the time. Here's more or less what they look like, stems on them. Look like little bitty berries. And that's what they made the medicine and stuff out of. That's elderberry. Now next up is thyme. Thymes, however you want to pronounce it. Looks like flocks to me. They made a lot of medicine out of these things. It all kinds of medicine. Antioxidants, vitamin C and A, iron, magnesium, fiber. Helps aid in, aid in memory loss and for concentration of the mind. It helps with acne, wounds, bites, skin care, and a lot of other different things. And here's what it looks like. Here's a rarity. This is one that you see around the home in the old places, in their gardens around the house. Aloe. They used it a lot around just for sunburns, skin rashes, insect bites, such a stuff. Now this aloe, it, it's not hardly found in this area in the wild. But this is what it looks like and they kept it around the home in their herb garden. I have seen it around. Nice old plant. Now this next one is a weird one. I hardly can pronounce it. Echinacea, I'll give it my best shot. And it's a beautiful plant, beautiful flowers. They raise these around the home in their herb gardens, and they still do today. It boosts the immune systems. It's good for burns, insect bites, skin rashes, and stuff like that. And this is what it looks like. It's a beautiful flowered plant. Echinacea. Now, the one up on the last one here is a rarity, but I have seen it in some herb gardens, but not out in the wild. It's a passion flower. Beautiful plant. And it was good for insomnia and anxiety. They still use medicines of that today. Beautiful plant. And it put it off a fruit like this. This is what it looked like. A beautiful plant. You just you just don't see that out in the wild. Not in this country. Now here's one that everybody knows. It's basil. This is holy basil. Make a lot of medicine out of that. It's good for stress relief, mood stabilizer, and inflammatory properties. 
and it's good for cooking too. That wasn't on the list, I thought I'd throw that in there. So, that's basil. Now, I only scratched on the surface of all these plants in these mountains. It's unlimited, this plants. And if you're really interested, I'll leave a link in this description here on this video of this Guide to Municipal Plants of Appalachia. It really goes deep. A lot of them you think was weeds, they got medicinal properties. I mean, he's just unlimited plants in these mountains. I would say these cures they've not even found yet in these mountains of these plants. But these old people here, especially the Native Americans, they'll know more than anybody will ever know. And most of their secrets has died with them. And they are a great people, and they know this land. And these settlers that come in here, they learn from these Native Americans and they've carried it on down through generations after generations. And they lived off the land and this is how they made a lot of their medicines. Now keep in mind back in them days, there was no doctors, no hospitals, no nothing. You either lived or you died and you got out and made it off of this land. That was the way it was. So, the biggest thing in these Appalachians, especially the ginseng, is just, the same is just being over-harvested. Now, a lot of people respect it, especially the, t the diggers that dig for this same, but a lot of them don't too. So, they just, it's just not being over-harvested. This is some of the prizest roots in the world is all these Appalachians and we're trying to protect them and keep them going. So, I just touched on the surface of this. There's so many plants out there, it's unlimited. So I hope y'all enjoyed this. I just thought I would share this because there's a lot of this is new to me. So I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.